Welcome everyone. Um, I'm Tanya Hughes and I am the Primary Regional Director with United Learning. I have responsibility for 10 primary academies in the north of England, as well as the curriculum in all 33 of our primary schools. I'm going to ask Tina Ray now to introduce herself. So hi, I'm Tina Ray. I'm the primary science curriculum writer. I develop teacher subject knowledge packs and lesson materials for our primary teachers. I also coordinated teachers and volunteers who helped create remote science lessons during school closures. I'll now hand you back to Tanya to start the presentation. Thanks, Tina. Um, throughout this, there'll be opportunities for you to ask questions. We'd ask you, please, if you could post them in the panel on the right hand side. We are expecting quite a lot of questions, so we'll show and answer summary questions, but can't get round to all of them. Any that we don't get round to, we will try to publish um, in the Q&A after the webinar. If you could upvote those questions, uh, it'll help us know which ones to focus on at the end of the session. Next, please. So United Learning is a large mat. We've got schools from Carlisle in the north all the way down to Bournemouth in the south and south and everywhere in between. So I'm going to talk to you for about 10 minutes about United Learning's approach to remote learning during lockdown, specifically for our primary academies. And Tina will then share a specific science unit which was adapted for remote, learn remote learning and teaching. There will, as I said, be a Q&A at the end of the session, but please post questions all the way through the webinar. Next, please. We've had our curriculum writers for less than a year, uh, and our main focus has been on supporting teachers to develop their science subject knowledge, as well as other subject areas. So we know that what we're doing isn't perfect, and in making this webinar, we've already found lots of things that we will improve for this year and next. We're not aiming to provide a, 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 an exact how to guide for delivering remote teaching. We know that we're a large trust where we the advantage of lots of teachers choosing to deliver the same curriculum. And so what we've done won't be feasible in every school. But we hope that we can help you with tips and prompts that you'll be able to adapt for your settings. Getting to where we got to now took a long time and we did work through the Easter holidays, upskilling writers in terms of technology and remote teaching pedagogy. And we were coordinating volunteers from across a lot of our schools. And even with all of that behind us, it still took time to get into a rhythm. So we hope that through the webinar, we'll give you an outline of our experiences and we'll provide some useful prompts and tips that might help you. But please, this is not to be taken as a definitive how to guide. Next, please. So I'm going to start, as I said, with the re remote teaching approach from United Learning during lockdown. Next, please. So as it became clear that school closures were going to last longer than the couple of weeks we'd first thought, we knew that as well as reviewing existing learning and reinforcing what pupils had already learned, we were going to have to start looking at a good way to actually teach new content on top of review and revision. We started with the EFE Remote Learning Review and it's definitely worth a read if you haven't seen it. But there was still work to be done to make sure that we implemented this in a way that was appropriate for our schools. And we agreed some principles that we wanted to take forward across all of our subjects, including science. Next, please. So the first thing was how we would maintain teaching quality through what we decided to do, which was around asynchronous lessons. So those are lessons that are not live streamed. So the teacher is recording and delivering lessons asynchronously. Now we plan and teach our classroom lessons using Rosenstein principles, which include reviewing material, questioning to deepen and check understanding, 
sequencing concepts in small steps and providing models to support understanding and providing opportunities for guided and independent practice with scaffolds where needed. To maintain that quality of teaching in our remote lessons, we needed to make sure that we could incorporate as many of these principles to what we delivered online. Next, please. One of the difficult areas that we found because we weren't having that daily, that immediate interaction with pupils in terms of assessment for learning was how we could use formative assessment remotely. And we were trying to link that to the Rose and Shine principles to make sure that we could still have that feedback mechanism to look at what children knew and could understand. And we were getting that and feeding that then into future lessons. Next, please. Alongside teachers, it has to be said, pupils were also learning new ways of learning. And particularly for younger pupils, it was really important that through our online uh, teaching and learning, we were helping them to understand how to do this and modelling that quite explicitly for them. So this involved things like structuring lessons really clearly, having regular reminders on our videos to pause the video, rewatch if pupils weren't understanding, or even things like going to get a pen and paper ready for the next part of learning. Next, please. Inclusion is really important to us and we make sure that pupils access the same content in our lessons. But remote teaching throws up another consideration and we needed to make sure that all pupils could access the content regardless of their technology setup at home. Therefore, in our schools, we made sure that the digital content was available through paper packs that were sent home and returned when needed. This didn't entirely replace the online learning experience, but did compensate in some way. Next, please. We also felt that we needed to be pragmatic about all of this and recognise that less learning than normal was better than no learning at all. In terms of engagement, we recognised that pupils weren't always going to be able to do at home the same lessons or activities that they could do in classroom. And so we did think much more explicitly about engagement than we would normally do for classroom lessons. How would we make sure that pupils wanted to learn? How could we keep them with us? How could we ensure that they wouldn't just get up and go off and, and, and play a game and then forget to come back and engage with learning? And in terms of the time that pupils could give to that online learning, we knew from conversations with our schools and parents that pupils weren't going to be able to do a full school day at home, both in terms of engagement, but also in terms of those practical considerations. If there's only one uh, device, phone, laptop, etc., between siblings, they're not all going to be able to do a full day's learning um, every day. So we decided at that point that we would slim down the breadth of the curriculum and we would focus on English, maths, science, PE, history and geography and aim for lessons that would take three hours in total. So in the, in the case of science, where we would normally look for two hours a week, we slim this down to one. Next, please. So how did we do all of this if we weren't having um, live stream teaching? We opted to use um, a tool called Sway from Microsoft. Not something that our teachers had seen before, not something that I'd seen before, but it's a really useful tool in order to deliver interactive web pages that people can access very easily. Some really useful features. You can add text, you can add images, videos, you can add audio clips so that the, the Sway will read aloud text for, the, for pupils that need it. We could embed content and videos that we've made ourselves or those from elsewhere. And we also used Microsoft Forms as a form of formative assessment. And all of those things can be put into one single Sway that will allow pupils to work through learning in a meaningful way and would help us to deliver Rosenstein principles remotely. Next, please. 
Each of our subjects was written as a subject sway. And when we first started, we were, we were using individual sways for each subject. So a child would click on and load up an English sway, work through the learning, come out, upload a math sway, work through the learning, etc. But we found that for particularly for younger pupils, this prevented them from working through their learning in a meaningful way. So we moved to making one web page per day of teaching for each year group that took the child right from the early morning, all through each different lesson, clearly marked for pupils, right through to the final part of the day, which was usually some form of uh, singing. Next, please. The way that we delivered sways meant that they could be personalised by a class teacher. They could have their own little video at the beginning, talking to the pupils, checking in with them so that we were getting that engagement in the emotional side of teaching and learning. They could also be personalised to give some reinforcement, celebrating success in whatever way the, the schools used and the pupils were used to. And as I said earlier, particularly for younger pupils, those audio recordings of the text meant that pupils could access the sway without adult supervision. And you'll see when we look at the science example later that, that those um, audio recordings are not there because this was designed for older pupils. But certainly for younger pupils, all sways had an audio recording so that a child could start in the morning, could work through, could click on the audio, could hear the explanation and could pause, stop and go back when needed. So that parents who were busy, who were working, who were also supporting um, other children weren't tied to the sway with their child all day. Next, please. The way that we structured the lessons was really important to us. And we had those stages of practice and sections within lessons clearly laid out. So there was evidence of direct teaching, teacher modelling and opportunities for pupils to practice with support from the teacher through a video before going on to do independent practice and then into feedback. Through the videos around the guided practice, those reminders all the time about for pupils on how they could regulate their own learning. Don't forget, pause the video, go back if you didn't understand. Now you're going to go on to do the next piece of work. Make sure that you have a book, your pen, your pencil ready. And in the early stages, actually reminding pupils on how to set work out if they were going to submit it back to school. Next, please. So as I said, there were several things that we had to learn how to do um, as a trust and me personally. So we were learning very rapidly how to use sways how to use forms, which is a really good way of getting feedback. You can put in multiple choice questions that pupils respond to. There's opportunities in forms for longer answers and those can come back to the class teacher. We did include in those forms um, as we moved forward some wellbeing questions, which just enabled teachers to check in on how well pupils were coping, not only with the learning, but if there was anything they wanted to flag up about their circumstances at home. We have um, made a producing sways guidance um, and it's on our platform, on the, uh, this webinar platform if you want more information and it does cover the basics of sway, forms and making voiceover PowerPoint videos. I do have to say I found it quite easy eventually um, to produce sways in this form because it is so structured and, and, and so straightforward. I'm going to hand you over now to Tina, who's going to talk to you through a specific science unit, which we adapted for remote learning in this way. Tina. Thank you, Tanya. Next slide, please. Thank you. So I'll be talking about our journey from how we adapted our unit sequence, and that's the lessons that would have been taught face to face in the classroom to providing online lessons through Sways to allow pupils to continue their learning at home. Next, please. Um, it was a new way of teaching for us and a new way of learning for pupils. So 
I must make it clear from the outset that we are not claiming that what we have done is absolutely perfect or is the only correct way of doing things. However, we are very proud of what we've achieved and we're really excited to share our work with you today. We'll be sharing a year five lesson on air resistance. That's from the forces unit. Next, please. So our journey can be broken down into three main stages. The first stage is adapting our unit sequence. The second is adapting lessons for remote teaching. And the final stage is creating the sway. I'll go through each of the stages in turn. Next, please. So the first stage was to adapt our unit sequence. Next, please. So here you can see our unit overview and unit sequence. So let me explain what they are. Our unit overview outlines what it is we want pupils to know and understand by the end of the unit and how this is sequenced to build on prior learning. Our unit sequence maps this content into a series of six lessons and what we needed to do was we needed to start with our unit sequence and consider whether this was appropriate for remote teaching and whether we might need to prioritise certain pieces of knowledge. Next, please. So we had to consider three factors. They were time, deliverability and opportunity cost. So with time, we asked ourselves, do we have enough time to deliver this sequence remotely? We know that pupils may take longer to complete a lesson at home than in school. And so we considered the possibility of teaching the same content over more than one lesson. If we do this, will we have time to cover what we need to before the end of the school term? Deliverability. Can we teach this content well remotely? How can we teach disciplinary knowledge, which often has practical elements, successfully? And which parts of disciplinary knowledge will we focus on developing? Opportunity cost. So what will we lose if we don't teach the content now? And if we don't teach any new content now, will we have time to teach it later? So with all of this in mind, we decided to firstly teach the same substantive knowledge as originally planned because it would be challenging to incorporate any missed content into the year six physics unit that focuses on light and electricity. We also decided to sequence the content over the same number of lessons rather than split any over two lessons. And this was because as well as ensuring that the content was covered, we felt that the lessons needed to move at the right pace for year five pupils. We also decided to reduce the disciplinary knowledge taught in this unit because while it can be challenging to teach this unit remotely, it is relatively straightforward to incorporate it into future units. Next, please. So now we're on to stage two. So once we had agreed our unit sequence, we reviewed our original lesson plans and we considered how we could adapt it for remote teaching. So we'll talk about one lesson as an example, and this lesson is on air resistance. Next, please. So in this lesson, pupils would be taught that air resistance is a frictional force between air and a, move, and a moving object, which slows down the object, and how to accurately observe and measure using a stopwatch. There were lots of questions we had to ask ourselves at this stage and lots of things we had to consider. So I'm just going to go through each one of these on the list here one by one. So pedagogy, can we maintain good pedagogy such as delivering materials in small steps, providing models and opportunities for guided practice, asking questions regularly and checking understanding? Basically, the format of classroom teaching that pupils are used to. Can we maintain that lesson format or how can we adapt it for remote teaching? Um, metacognition. So as we mentioned earlier, learning from home was going to be a new way of learning for our pupils. So how can we support them to learn in this new way? 
pupils will be presented with a lesson and they'd be expected to reach the end of the lesson by themselves. How can we help them assess their learning along the way so that they know that they're on the right track? When we, the teachers, are not there to ask them questions and to check or assess their understanding, so formative assessment really, and to provide them with personalised support. So next is accessibility and inclusivity. Are we confident that pupils can access the lesson with minimal or no adult support? Are some pupils will have more support than others at home. Can activities be designed or adapted so that pupils can use the resources available to them in their home? In this lesson, the disciplinary knowledge had originally been taught using parachutes in the classroom. We changed this to using paper helicopters so that pupils could find the required resources at home. Engagement. So how can we make sure pupils remain engaged in remote teaching? It is so much easier, as Tanya said, for pupils to stop engaging with a lesson when they're at home than it is when they're in school. So we had to think much more about keeping pupils engaged than we normally would. Expectations. How will pupils know what is expected of them without the instruction and cues they would normally get in the classroom? We had to set high expectations and be clear about them, but we also had to be realistic about what pupils may be able to achieve with everything else that was going on. And last on the list, there's formative assessment. So in class, we would be asking pupils lots of questions to gauge their understanding, to give them personalised feedback, or to steer the lesson in a particular direction. And all of this would help us plan or tweak the next lesson in the sequence. So with remote teaching, how can we check pupils' understanding and use this to inform future planning? Next, please. So with all of these considerations in mind, we amended our lesson plan and developed a sway. So the sway is the remote science lesson that pupils worked through, and I'll talk through each part of the sway before showing you the actual sway. Thank you. Next, please. So the lesson starts by reviewing the knowledge required to access the lesson. When pupils click on one of these cards, the answer is revealed so that they get immediate feedback. These flashcards were made using the stack um, made using the stack tool in Microsoft Sway. Next, please. So new learning is linked to previous learning and it builds on what pupils already know. And this link is made explicit to pupils in the video. The new learning is taught in small steps and the pupils are encouraged to participate in the demonstrations as well while they watch the video. Next, please, James. So the core knowledge here is reviewed regularly and consolidated using stacks that pupils can click through at their own pace. They can come back and click through it again later. Pupils are also reminded to rewatch videos or reread text before moving on to the next part of the lesson if they got any of their answers incorrect. So it helps them to assess their own learning. Pupils learning is reviewed throughout the entire lesson. Next, please. Thank you. Um, here we are checking pupils' understanding of key vocabulary. Um, the correct answer is hidden underneath the question card. Thank you. And where there were existing resources and video videos available online, we embedded them into our sway. This video you can see here is um, from BBC. It's a, it's a BBC video that we found on YouTube. Next, please. And when we where we couldn't find online videos that were exactly what we needed or where we had to supplement existing videos with additional teaching, we recorded our own videos and we embedded them into the sway. This video explains the independent practice task. Next, please. So we uploaded files to support pupils where needed. If pupils had a printer at home, they could have used this template instead of drawing a helicopter template by hand. But 
all of our lessons are designed so that pupils can access the lesson without a printer. Next, please. And here for formative assessment, we used Microsoft Forms. Teachers could use the data to adapt the next lesson or to provide support for pupils where needed. We used multiple choice questions. Um, these included common misconceptions as answer options as well. After pupils submit their answers, they can see their results immediately and read comments that explain why an answer option was incorrect. So just before I show you our actual sway, I just want to quickly show you how Microsoft Forms can display the data collected from the quizzes. Next, please. So as you can see, within a few seconds, you can see the number of pupils who completed the quiz and the proportion of pupils who answered the questions or each question correctly or incorrectly. You can also download this data into a spreadsheet and it will show you each pupil's responses so that you can follow up with individual support where needed. Next, please. So let's um, have a look at the Sway now. This is the Year 5 Air Resistance Sway. I'll show you the entire sway first, then I'll go back and start at the top again and work my way down, showing you the different parts of the lesson. I'll try not to repeat too much of what I've already said. You can see that the new material is delivered in small steps. Bold headings help section the lesson into small manageable parts. The lesson is clear and easy to follow. Pupils just scroll down through the page and the lesson is sequenced in a familiar format. The layout of the lesson looks similar whether pupils are accessing this way from a laptop, tablet or smartphone. For younger pupils, we recorded audio clips throughout the lesson so that the pupils could have the text read out to them. These were not added in this lesson, but please remember that teachers could duplicate our sway and then edit it however they wanted, and this includes adding their own audio clips. So the first part of the lesson is the review of the previous lesson's learning. Here we have the stacks. There are two text cards in each of these stacks, and if you click on a text card, the second card will appear. You can have more than two cards in your stack. You can also have images in your stack too. Here is a stack with image cards. You can view the stack in full screen too. This is one of the videos we made. We embedded our video into the Sway so that pupils wouldn't be redirected to another website to watch the video. We wanted the lesson to be in one place. Things you will need include a sheet of paper, you can also embed most external videos into this way too. This helicopter template is an image. Alternatively, you could insert a hyperlink that would allow pupils to download a file to their computer, such as a PDF, which they could then print off. And right at the bottom of the page, we have the Microsoft form for pupils to complete and submit to their teacher. And again, pupils don't need to leave the page at all. And by asking for their name and class, they don't even need to be logged into anything for their teacher to track their responses. OK, so this is an example of something that we've done. And while we know it's not perfect, we hope it's been helpful. You can see the final sway as well as a how to guide for producing sways on the webinar page. I'll now hand you back to Tanya, who will share our final reflections.
Thanks, Tina. So I think really the, the three main takeaways that we had from all of this was that commitment to quality teaching as you would in the classroom, the delivery of material in small steps, building in those opportunities for questions and really crucially for formative assessment. Do embrace the technology. We wouldn't have been able to do this, as I'm sure you can appreciate, without Sway. And it, we did realise it was actually quite intuitive once we started. But don't expect too much too soon. As I said earlier, this took us some time to put together and we are a big trust with lots of teachers at our disposal. And maybe what we've done here isn't realistic for everyone. But please don't let that stop you trying to take elements from it, the sway structure, the use of forms in particular. And I should say that we are incorporating the use of sways with live stream teaching in our current um, response to continuity of learning, making sure that we've got a real balance between the two. We will try to answer some questions now. So next, please. I will answer some. Uh, Tina will. We've got uh, Dan from our technology team on the call as well, who will who will pick up on, um, on any of those particular technology questions. So Anna, questions? Hi, so um, starting, I think, with that point, Tanya, about how you and how Tina adapted to learn how to do this and a question about I think both how how straightforward was it to learn how to do it and how long did it take to kind of you know typically create a single day sway um, if I pick up on a bit about how quickly you can learn to use it um, I, I think I had a, a very quick how to how to session uh, with Dan just talking me through what it did and then played around a little bit on my own, very, very quickly picked up the basics and then added to and developed. So, you know, a half an hour um, tutorial looking at how how to use it and then playing with it to um, improve what you're actually presenting. So actually learning how to use Sway was really, really straightforward. Um, Tina, do you want to pick up the bit about how long that might actually take to produce? Yep, so um, it really depends on the lesson. Um, the factor that you have to consider and that will take the most time is whether you have to create your own videos because when you create your own videos, you have to edit it and that can take a, a very long time. So if you are using videos that are already available online and you've got a lesson plan in mind already, it is a matter of building this way. It can probably take um, about an hour or less, but if you are going to be producing your own videos, from the start of the lesson to the end of the lesson, editing it as, that, um, as well, it can take um, much longer. So the longest um, time it took me to create a lesson was about a day, but I did create um, about three or four videos. But Sway is really simple to use. It's uh, pretty much drag and drop. Once you, um, if you're not creating your own videos and you're just embedding, it's not gonna take you that long at all. Thank you. So thinking now, a number of people have asked about how this sort of translates to the current um, context where many schools will be experiencing um, trying to balance having children in class and some children at home at the same time and teachers obviously teaching full time in their in their classes uh, but also how 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 we make that manageable to potentially also use sways alongside that. Uh, I don't know, Tanya, if you've got yeah. reflections on working with your school, schools on that. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick up on that one. Thanks, Anna. And um, yes, it, it, we are. It is different than it obviously than it was in lockdown when we've got um, people able to work on producing sways uh, uh, in this way. As I said earlier, we, we, we've a bit of a blend now between some live stream teaching, but still very much the use of sways. And what several of my schools are doing is they are doing their planning in the form of a sway. So their English planning for the day is done as a sway, which means that if a child then needs that sway at home, there isn't much adaptation then in order for that to um, 
to, to be sent through. The other thing to, to think about as well, um, which, which we're working on, is having teachers record their live teaching and embedding that in a sway so that we've got that review and practice. So the children at home may be a day behind, but they're still getting that, that teaching quality of the video from the teacher without it actually causing the teacher any additional workload. So, uh, you know, we, we are still working through that at the moment, but those are a couple of the things that, that we're doing to try and make sure that, that this is manageable in the current situation. Thank you. Passing now to a question about um, kind of different content for different age groups. Um, what, uh, what, what, if anything, did you do differently for early years children? in relation to this? I think I'm going to pick that one up again. Um, in terms of early years, uh, we're very much aware of the fact that that quality early years education relies on that interaction with, with adults. So there were, there were sways produced for early years, but they focused around the, the core learning, uh, phonics, songs, stories and sharing. There was an expectation within that that there would be adult interaction um, and we haven't got an answer to all of that but we were looking at those core things with some suggestions and ideas for parents to work with children so some of the direct teaching as in the others but then a lot of it was around ideas and suggestions for parents in early years and a sort of follow-on question really for, for um SEN pupils and whether whether we did anything to kind of adapt for for pupils with additional needs. Yes, as um, uh, as Tina said, all, all all of the sways could be taken, adapted, changed. They were written in a way that that teachers could take. Um, and where this worked particularly well, um, teachers and um, specialist support um, uh, workers were adapting and amending those sways for particular pupils to meet their additional needs. So yes, it, it wasn't a one size fits all. This was the core, but then there were adaptations made um, for those specific specific pupils. And you mentioned, um, I know Tanya, uh, early on in the presentation about having a, having a mind to the fact that uh, children may not have their own devices, may be sharing devices, uh, may, be, may struggle with access to internet, um, parents working from home who may, be may, may not have time to support them. Could you maybe just say a little bit about how you kind of thought about all of those challenges in kind of devising the content and thinking about its use? Yes, I mean, the, 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 the key one, as you say, is that, that many of our pupils didn't have um, the technology to themselves to be able to access. So we made sure that the sways could be accessed from, from, from any device. And as Tina said, it, they're designed to be viewed on a mobile phone. We did start early on um, with having separate subjects but actually that was very difficult to do on, on a mobile device. So that's one of the reasons that we made daily sway. We also, at first we embedded sways from, so we would embed a science sway into the daily sway, but the visibility of that on a mobile dev device was quite poor. So we actually made it one continuous um, piece of learning so that children weren't coming in and out. Using the sways in the way that we did and developing them so that children could work through that whole day's learning by themselves was a way to try to alleviate some of the pressures on parents who were trying to work um, or who were um, supporting other pupils as well. And because it can be stopped and started at any point, it, it could be fitted around the daily life of a family. So it didn't have to be done from nine till two or whatever, it, you know, if it, if it fitted better with a family that, that this some of this could be done um, later on in the day, 
because it can be stopped and started and it is it is totally within the control of the child then then that could fit around the family we still had some pupils for whom technology was a complete barrier and we we do have many school schools serving highly deprived um, areas and um, and so we produced a paper pack version of the sway that was delivered and collected from parents in terms of pedagogy in terms of that teaching and the direct teaching this obviously wasn't um, a total replacement for the the work on the sways but at least it would give that um continuity to those children who were at home and where that was the case, there were follow up calls of teachers talking parents through the, the intended learning um, for, for that week. So we were aware all the way through. It was at the forefront of our thinking when producing all of these, uh, of making sure that it was as accessible as possible in as many ways as possible. And at the time that suited the family, if there were you know, uh, limitations on the number of devices. Thank you. I have a feeling this one may be for you as well, Tanya. I'm sorry. Uh, just um, a question on engagement, really, and on what strategies uh, schools found helpful in keeping children engaged through this experience, both, I guess, both kind of during the, the sort of lockdown period, but maybe now as well with individual children self isolating. Um, I think if, if if we talk about through lockdown, I think engagement varied. Um, you know, with, with 33 primary schools, I, there's not a generic, it was this or, or the other. Where it was strongest, schools had really thought carefully about their feedback mechanisms, so how they would use forms, whether there were mechanisms for children to upload work, to take photographs, um, and upload work to, uh, send work to a um, uh, a web, a web, a, an email address, sorry, or, or upload to um, uh, a platform that the school was already using. And where school had really thought about that engagement was better because they were getting that feedback from what they were sending in. It was also better where schools had incorporated those personal messages at the front and that information from teachers and keeping in touch with the all. Oh, you know, I won't celebrate the piece of work that, that several children did last week um, in our last science lesson or well done to, to these pupils um, for their work on um, in history or whatever. And then where engagement dropped, one of the things that worked particularly well was those phone calls for some parents to talk about expectations of learning for the following week and to talk around some of the key things that they may parents may need to support the children with. Um, if we move on to engagement now, as I said, we've, we've got a little bit more of a blended approach where there is some live streaming as well as uh, the use of the sways. And I think in either case, it's that, that regular contact with the class teacher so if it is all use of remote learning, then having at least once or twice a week a means and a format for the teacher to run some sort of tutorial, picking up on misconceptions and teaching children how to learn in this way, as Tina said, um, because it's slightly different again, even now. Thank you. Um, just conscious, uh, you, you made the point towards the end, Tanya, about this being something that we've you know, been able to do as a as a as a large group, um, and that it may not be realistic for others to to kind of um, achieve this sort of that level of what what we were able to provide. You for you and Tina, I think probably if if you were a, if you if you were a kind of smaller school, a single school thinking about doing this, what would you prioritise in terms of you know what, what's the what's the biggest bang for your for your time, as it were. If, as, shall I start given that I'm already on Tina and then I'll, I'll pass on. I mean, I think for me it would be about learning to use the, the technology. And as I said, incorporating that into what you're doing anyway, 
So using it every day, using it as part of your teaching, using it to plan lessons um, and getting children used to using it whilst they're in school so that when we do get to the position that they're using this out of school, it's it's second nature, really. So it's that it's that thinking about the technology and practicing it whilst you're in the, the comfort of a classroom. Tina. Yep, so same as Tanya, getting used to the technology. Sorry, I'll start again. Um, so same as Tanya, um, getting used to the technology and making sure pupils are used to the technology as well. Um, pupils might be learning new technology and if they become more confident with using it, they'll be more likely to engage with it. Thank you. And Dan, I'm going to bring you in here because I'm conscious that you've been ans answering some questions behind the scenes about um, how this all works, uh, in particular kind of passwords, uh, sharing sways, how do we do that, how do we get them to the to the children, um, uh, what the different tools are. Could I just ask you to just say a little bit about some of the answers that you've been sort of giving to people individually just so that we everybody can benefit from that? Yes, of course. Um, I mean, one of the reasons we we chose Sway was because of that ease of access, because not all our pupils would have individual accounts. So using platforms like Teams or Google Classroom, we weren't in a position or ready to to go with that. So we needed something that was easy access. And the advantage of Sway is not only is it accessible on you know mobile devices, you know, very low uh, barrier of entry. You you don't need any account to access it. So it's as simple as here's a web link, you know, to my sway. As the author of the sway, I choose whether it's you know public, i.e. anyone can view it, or I want to restrict it to my um, you know just my colleagues in the first instance. But once it is an anyone can view sway, the beauty of that is it can go on your school website or sent out via text message however you you kind of distribute that kind of material to parents and pupils so uh, yeah it was important for us that we we had a very low barrier of entry so a simple web link and the children could access it thank you and um just a final one for tina and tanya um are we able to share any of the resources that you know the, the examples of sways um, that people can then use and adapt themselves. Um, I, I'll pick up on that if that's OK first. Um, now that we've reopened or that's a terrible thing to say, we've opened more widely to all pupils and we're not producing the sway centrally. Um, and as I said, individual schools are now producing those materials. And all of the sways that we've written that are already adhere to the United Learning Curriculum. Um, so that whilst they're based on the national curriculum, they may not fit the sequence of learning for all schools. And um, if you're interested in learning more about the United Learning Curriculum, then please contact Charlie Cutler, whose um, web uh, email address will be on the uh, on the chat page. So at the moment, you know, we're not in a position to share um, all of them. I'm sure if you look on some of our school websites, there may still be some up there from the summer that would show you what we did. Um, but as I said, you know, if you if you want to know more about what we do, um, please contact Charlie. Thank you, Tanya. I think we have got have, on one of the science examples, Sway, I think maybe on the on the website along with the, the other resources. Yes, this the science one that, that uh, Tina has, has talked about today will be on the on the uh, webinar page. Lovely. Um, and Tina, just for you, were you were you working on the, the these the the science sways on your own, or were you working with a, with a team of people? Doing so these? I was yeah I was working with a team of um, United Learning teachers and volunteers, um, but we each produced our own lesson. So we it wasn't two people helping to produce one. And um, teachers they very kindly. Um, made it made this ways in their own time and um, 
and yeah, so we worked as a team, but we worked to create our own sways and not everyone worked um, every week. So when they did have free time, they'd volunteer to help. When they were busy, we completely understood because it was hard times for, for everyone. Um, but there was a small team of United Learning teachers who produced the sways, the, the science ways. And for different subjects, there were um, they had their own little team of volunteer teachers too. Lovely. Thank you very much. I think we have probably now answered most of the or kind of in broad terms, at least answered most of the questions that um, people have asked. I guess I'm just going to go back. Just just want the, this kind of theme of how we do this um, uh, now alongside uh, you know, the kind of expectation that we will be providing remote learning and um, how uh yeah how how ma how manageable that now feels for, for for schools to kind of do the two alongside each other uh that's obviously a, a sort of challenge for that everybody's is very live in people's minds right now um I, i'll pick that up again um so yeah very much at the forefront of everybody's minds because teachers are teaching all day uh, and then the expectation that we then provide uh, this quality remote teaching for pupils who are not in school um, is is a challenge for, for everyone um, including in, in a large trust. There are, we do have some um, sways available that schools can use. Um, we, you can take the planning and make a sway quite quickly from uh, lesson planning that we have available in the in our curriculum so that isn't a particularly onerous task um, as Tina said the difficulty comes with the videos which is why you know, I was talking earlier about not making that additional workload for teachers by having the work at home a day behind so the teacher videos the live teaching and embeds that into the sway um, but we are also looking at some uh, live stream teaching again partly from a workload perspective so that, the, that we're not trying to do the, the, the two thing the two things at once thank you very much and uh yeah thank you thank you for answering answering the questions uh you could you should just tanya did you tanya did you want to say anything just to close um just again just to reiterate that you know we are we do know we're a big trust uh, we are finding our way this term um as everybody else is we will and are using a lot of what we learned through lockdown and through the use of sways to support teachers um but as in everything in education um things are constantly evolving um and we you know we will continue to do so um and we will try and answer any other questions that that have been posed in the question and answer session at the end um, but if you do want to find out any more about the United Learning Curriculum, then yeah, please contact Charlie. Uh, and I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their, their evening. Thank you very much.